Welcome to a brand spanking new episode of Who Do You Think You Are? An exploration into how our thoughts, beliefs, and feelings create our reality. My name is Lassia Kahoot and I'm your host. I'm joined by my co-host on this show and in life, Glenn Sheridan. Every episode, we're joined by a special guest who inspires us to consider not only what we think, but how we think, and how that thinking impacts our life experience. It's time to get this conscious conversation started as we ask today's guest, who do you think you are? All right, I'm getting a message saying that we are now streaming live on YouTube. So hello, hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Who Do You Think You Are? My name is Lassia Kahoot, and I am your host. And as always, I am here with my co-host on the show and in life, Mr. Glenn Sheridan. Hello, everyone. And today we have another super special guest that we have been wanting to have on the show for a long time. And so we're really excited that finally today is the day. So just before I go into introductions, I just want to say thank you, thank you, thank you. We are so grateful that we are coming to you from Eat or from Saanichton on Vancouver Island, where we live, work, breathe, and play on the unceded lands of the Wisteinich people. We are so, so grateful to have the opportunity to do so every moment of every day, including right now. So as we move along, today's guest, who is someone that I also know and is a good friend of mine, she is an award-winning personal brand and lifestyle photographer, makeup artist, mentor, and creative producer for the modern entrepreneur. Her creative journey began with her profound love of all living things. How beautiful is that? Her passion for creative arts and a lifelong desire to make a difference in the world and to inspire others to do the same. She has a podcast called The Eloquent Entrepreneur in which she reveals revels, highlighting the stories of entrepreneurs to inspire the everyday change maker in all of us. So she says, whether you're a business owner, notable personality or mother of two, you make an impact. So with that in mind, our guest today offers a fresh and genuine approach to creating compelling visual branding that reveals the soul, inspires connection, and makes a lasting impression. Now, I also know this person on a on a personal level because she is a friend and she is my photographer. So I met her a few years ago when I was scouring the internet to try and find someone to do some photography for me. And I got hooked immediately when I saw the questionnaire that she had on her website and just the thought provoking, insightful questions that she asked, which really made me think about who I am, and I was already in spiritual practitioner studies, or on my way to that, and what is it that I wanted out of the experience. And so the conversation that resulted, you know, based on that questionnaire is what ended up with us working together and having this amazing, amazing day where Glenn was there, there was a makeup artist there, and we went to three different locations, and just all day had this incredible experience of capturing my essence i guess on film so to speak and um and then a friendship ensued and here we are a few years later and uh and we're talking with this person on our show and i am so delighted because it has been amazing to watch the trajectory of this individual from a few years ago to where she is now how she is showing up in the world and the impact that she is making so (laughs) with all of that knowing that there is so much more to come up that's already bubbling up i would like to ask linda mackey tell us who do you think you are (laughs) Wow. Well, thank you so much, uh, Lassie and Glenn, for having me. I'm just like, I've been terrified (laughs) to come on the show. But now that I'm here, I'm just so excited. And hearing you actually introduce me, um, that really almost made me cry because it just really instilled this groundedness in, wow, and hearing you say it, um, because normally it's me writing it and you know, maybe saying it to other people, um, but hearing somebody else say it just really made me feel grounded and convicted in who I am and what I do. And um, so thank you for that, because that just is really empowering just for me in this moment. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I knew you were going to ask me that question. Yeah. <laughs> who do I think I am? Um, and, you know, I mean, the, the biggest, like, two words, um, 
that come to mind that um, you help me uh, uncover and <laughs> discover is infinite possibilities. And I mean, this is what I wish for everyone, but I mean, I am literally just a woman, a girl, a female, um, you know, on this journey of life, uh, of self-discovery, of self-expression, self-acceptance, most of all, um, and really just trying to understand who I am and be understood and ultimately be happy, you know, and leave this world knowing that, you know, my presence made a difference. And that's really at the core of everything, I think, in terms of who I think I am. Um, I mean, I can list off all the things, you know, I'm a mom, I'm a photographer, I'm a wife, you know, I'm a daughter, sister-in-law, friend, sister, <laughs> um, I'm a mentor, I'm a podcast host, I'm a, oh my gosh, what are all these, all the things, you know, um, I love that we are all so many things like we have so many facets to us and uh this is part of why i do what i do and i love what i do by the way <laughs> i love being a photographer and i've been a photographer for a long time that's my core i guess identity um, apart from being a mother which is my other core <laughs> um, family is super key to me super important um and relationships, of course. Um, but yeah, it's it's been a journey of definitely um, self discovery, and you know, seeing. I mean, part of the reason I'm on the show is so I can express myself, and because when I became a photographer, I was on the other side, mm -hmm. and I consciously did that because. Um, I didn't know how to express myself. I grew up, um, you know, I had a great dad, but he was quite critical of me growing up. And just slowly over time, like just through, you know, being the, you know, the child of the 70s, you know, you're seen, not heard. Um, you know, over time, it was always like, oh, don't be so loud. Don't be so rambunctious. Don't be so boisterous. And I was quite all those things when I was a kid. So I was shushed a lot. <laughs> Um, and so just over time, I just really, you know, kind of shrunk into myself. And so by the time, I mean, I'd had, you know, various careers and stuff like that. But by the time I became a photographer, I mean, what really inspired me to be a photographer was just taking pictures of friends and various models and actors and stuff like that. And I was just so in awe of seeing them express themselves on camera. And I just was like, wow you're amazing like how like i was just fascinated by you know seeing them really express themselves and you know blossom in front of the camera like they're just their whole i could see who they were you know and i was like i wish people could see me this way so anyways um <laughs> yeah that's who i am now and i mean that's who i am <laughs> through this whole, or becoming, I should say. And, you know, I'm, I feel like I'm on the show today for a reason, because I feel ready to be seen mm -hmm. and heard. And, um, you know, that's why I've, you know, kind of delved into these other avenues of uh, expression, like mentoring and um, the podcast, you know, that was a huge step for me a couple of years ago. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, I mean, I don't know what else to say about it right now, but I'm sure there's lots more to uncover as we <laughs> carry on. <laughs> yeah, that, that tons, tons to uncover. And so, you know, I mean, you know, you kind of, you said it all with infinite possibilities and there are infinite directions and infinite conversations that we could have just based on that response right there. There's so much in there to unpack. And I guess the thing that sort of jumps out for me immediately is that what you were talking about because uh, we're the same age we we, yes. we were born in the same year and so the whole notion of being a child of the 70s and and you know being seen not heard um i get that i can totally relate to that 
and and sort of having to live up to other people's expectations or by other people's rules um which is not to knock parenting styles of any kind it was just different um yeah. and uh and so you know the way what you said i wish people could see me this way as you were seeing other people when you were looking through you know the camera and sort of seeing them express themselves but now you know being able to say i'm ready to be seen and heard and that's partly why i'm, I'm on the podcast today it kind of reminds me of of two things it reminds me of my experience of what it was like to be photographed by you um and and how much preparation went into that and and just sort of you know it wasn't just like me coming to you and saying okay make me look awesome and just you know sort of you know shoot me <laughs> in a certain number of poses or whatever you yeah. really wanted to know what I was about you wanted to know what my life was about you wanted to know what I thought how I felt about things um and 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 so when it came to pick the locations there was a lot of thought and a lot of intention that went into those three locations that we ended up shooting at um mm -hmm. and part of it for me was because I feel so connected to the land. I feel so connected to just the earth and the mountains and the sea and the trees and, and the water. And for me, it felt like I had to be outside to do that photo shoot, mm -hmm. because if I had been inside, I would have been limiting myself, um, you know, from how I could really, really show up. But then, you know, as much work as went into the prep to see the images that came out of that experience, you know, the ones that you captured with your eye through the lens of the camera, the way that you were perceiving things. Um, mm -hmm. It was, I just remember sitting there like at your studio that, that first time when you showed me those like hundreds where I had to, that I had to narrow <laughs> down to 10, which for me was kind of easy because I had worked for a photographer for a few years earlier in my twenties. And so right yeah. away, it was like, I could see the ones, you know, <laughs> no immediately. And then yeah. it kind of would go, you know, this or this, this or this, this or this. And I narrowed it down pretty quickly, but to see myself. <laughs> the way that you and your camera saw me was was a really, really interesting experience because it wasn't just a snapshot at an event um, that someone took with, you know, their camera, their phone, you know, disposable, whatever. Um, it was it was crafted and there and there there's this this artistry and this skill and and this just allowing of creativity to express as you you were as we were working together and it was so much fun i mean it was a super <laughs> hot day it was at the end of september it has to be fun <laughs> it was on our anniversary i think um and it was a super mm -hmm. hot day um which was unexpected for that time of year mm -hmm. well, it was and july so, wasn't it or june no 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 it was september it was september. oh right yeah and um <laughs> and it was just sunny and hot and like blisteringly hot but it was just it was beautiful and it was fun and it was great. Just such an incredibly positive experience. Um, so there was that of you capturing me and then me seeing myself mm -hmm. captured in that way and going, wow, like I kind of, you know, I'm seeing things about myself I didn't necessarily see before, I didn't know or whatever. So that was really neat. And I have these beautiful prints, you know, just sort of as a beautiful memory. Um, and the other thing is sort of, as you're talking about capturing you know, and, and using this lens as a filter to see these people that you're photographing express themselves and their true nature is we recently saw this movie Free Guy. And in mm. that there are these sunglasses that the people of Free City, I forget what, what they are, like what that level of people is called. But when they put these sunglasses on, they see mm. life for what it truly is and the infinite possibilities that they can actually mm -hmm. take advantage of movie. and flow into <laughs> and it was just like this is this is what's real it's not sort of this like being asleep or not being open or whatever the the you know sort of the drudgery of every day but at the same time the main character in that show he, even before he finds out that you know there are these infinite possibilities available to him he's still making the best of every moment and every day. And so it, it, it just, it's kind of like life is what you make it. Life is really what you make it and how you perceive it. Mm -hmm. um, and if there's ever been a time, you know, in my lifetime, at least to be able to like keep shifting perspective and seeing the good 
or the possible versus what you know is going on it's been the last two years of you know the COVID experience or oh, unfoldment or response <laughs> or whatever but yeah. but anyway so just you know back to the infinite possibilities i just love that because that that just opens the door to anything is possible you can, oh. you can do anything you yeah. want that was uh, really, I mean, I don't know if I told you, but that was a, a, a big, <laughs> like, aha moment for me. Like, it was life changing, actually, because it made me realize that, you know what, I am and can be anything I want to be in any given moment. And I want other people to know that, too. Like, you can literally, you know, in an hour from now, change your life any way you want like do whatever you want um i mean it sounds but i mean that's kind of the concept right yeah, it is. <laughs> um, and so i'm like you know what i'm not in a box i'm not just a photographer i have so much more to me and yeah i bring a lot of stuff into who i am as a photographer how i my process how i do things um, how I see through the lens, how I see people, all that stuff and all the emotional and all that, you know, but there's all this other stuff that I, you know, like when I started becoming a mentor, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm doing it slowly, but I'm realizing, you know what, I have a lot of knowledge and wisdom that I can impart. Why not be a mentor? Yep. I can help. Uh, you know, I have, I have my assistant and, and we're working together and, and, you know, I'm mentoring her in her business and she's helping me. And it's just so rewarding because I'm like, wow, I actually have something to share and teach <laughs> and impart to, you know, somebody else. And, um, you know, and now it's kind of like bringing actually clients who I'm actually photographing to help them, you know, in their business. So it's, it's kind of like just one thing I'm like, that I was surprised at that came as a result of this way of thinking that we are all infinite possibilities. And, um, you know, at the end of the day, we're here to really like through the lens that you were talking about <laughs> reality versus, you know, um, that's part of the journey is to really, um, see life for what it is, you mm -hmm. know, and be more accepting of, of it and yourself yeah um because i mean <laughs> that was the other <laughs> realization i mean i've been on that journey like all of us you know like to love myself and be accepting of myself and all that kind of stuff and i went through years of not liking myself and thinking i was not good enough and everybody hated me and all this other stuff um but eventually through a lot of work and you know chatting with people like you and other people like um having those conversations and doing the work you know the inner work <laughs> um you know just coming to realize you know what i'm really okay and really accepting myself and you know that was that's huge and that's part of my work now as a photographer um because i see it all the time with women especially and men too, but mostly women, we just beat ourselves up all the time. We, you know, criticize ourselves and we have so much to give the world, um, you know, but if we waste our time criticizing ourselves and putting ourselves down, um, that's going to, that just gets in the way. It's gotten in my way mm -hmm. of getting here. I mean, it took me 10 years to produce the Eloquent Entrepreneur podcast video series um, because I was terrified. I was like, you know, and I had all these reasons why I shouldn't do it, you know, and that I'm not like, who am I to do this, you know, create this, um, this podcast um, and interview these people like, you know, <laughs> and then it just had, you know, with the help of my friend Adira and her husband, we filmed the first four episodes in 2019 and that was just like somebody saying hey linda let's do this you are good enough you know you've got you know they just sort of nudged me along and you know but it's like all these little things that happen and people that come into your life your your life and you know 
it's like suddenly you wake up and you're like, yeah, and then you're doing it. And then you're like, oh, <laughs> you know, I am possible. I, it is possible. Um, this is a possibility for me. And then you open it up for other people. Right. So, um, and as you know, I mean, we're in our fifties now. I mean, that's another thing that has really hit home with me is that I can't waste any more time. I don't have the luxury of, you know, <laughs> another, well, I mean, I'd hope, I hope I live to 90. <laughs> I do have longevity in my family, but I mean, you know, there's no guarantee. And, you know, I know I'm not going to be a photographer forever. Um, I think I have, like more to more to leave behind you know I, I i'll leave behind beautiful photos but i'd like to feel like i leave behind inspiration and you know people actually you know fully expressing themselves and getting to a point where they accept who they are and are excited about how they unfold because we're always becoming and and that's something that you know, um, is in the collective consciousness now. I think we all kind of feel that we are always becoming, you know, and I love that concept. Um, cause who knows what I'm going to be like in a year from now, who knows, <laughs> or you, <laughs> um, so yeah, so I got on, I got off on a tangent there, but <laughs> no, that's, that's what bubbled up. Right. And that's what these conversations are all about. And again, I mean, there's just yeah. so much to sort of go, go along with there. And I too, I love the idea of always becoming because this notion that, you know, at least was in my purview, maybe a couple of decades ago, where there were tons of self-help books that sort of said, you know, three easy steps to do these 10 things and you will, um, you know, just the systems, <clears throat> which can, you know, do have a time and place, um, but that, you know, then you'll get to here and you'll, you'll arrive at your destination, you know, like you'll, you'll yeah. the goal kind of thing. But then, then what? Well, then there's another goal. Then there's another destination. And, and, and this is, this is life. I mean, life is always fluid. It is always changing. It is never stagnant. And, and, you know, I, I continue along with my spiritual and consciousness studies, because for me, that's not only my main source of inspiration, but that's the activation for me to continue stepping into the next best version of myself and i would say more often than not it's hard <laughs> it's challenging because our comfort zone is the comfortable place to be because it's what we know it's what we know it's what we remember it's what we've experienced if we repeat what we've done up until now we'll get more of the same so there's there's comfort and familiarity in that but the comfort zone is also an uncomfortable place to be because this, you know, imagination, this creativity, this energetic universal flow that is always in play, that is the very essence of who we are, these infinite possibilities that you're talking about, they're constantly in play. They're constantly flowing. They're constantly available. And if we keep ourselves in these boxes or these shells of comfort zones, where it's like, I'm okay here because I know what's going on. If I venture mm. out of my comfort zone, then I have no idea that that push, that impulse, that, you know, whatever flow, it's going to keep hitting up against that comfort zone. Um, and the harder we try, the harder it's going to be to stay in that comfort zone. And that's mm -hmm. when we're going to, you know, not just attract, but create experiences that are going to keep making it more and more and more uncomfortable to be in that comfort zone, whether it's, you know, like having challenging relationships with others, whether it's experiencing pain and disease in our body, whether it's having the repetition of those old thoughts, beliefs of I'm not good enough, I'm not smart enough, I don't have what it takes, I'll, I'll never make it as an entrepreneur, um, you know, whatever, that just keep replaying and replaying until you decide enough. I am shifting, I am pivoting, I am stepping out of the comfort zone, even though I am terrified <laughs> to do so, because there's oh, yeah. so many different ways to live life than there is, you know, having lived it a certain way up until now kind of thing. So I also, I, I love what you're doing and I love that, you know, the work that you do and the exploration that you've done on yourself um, and this becoming that you are allowing yourself to just be fully immersed in, 
um, is, is mm -hmm. now inspiring others because that's kind of the ripple effect, you know, like it, it's the, I mean, my teacher has this, you know, when Harry met Sally thing, you know, I'll have what she's having. So when people see someone who is confident and, 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 um, accepting of themselves and loving themselves and valuing themselves mm -hmm. for some people, it can be very scary and off-putting, but I still think even with that, there's that underneath, which is like, but this is who you are too. And you can feel that way too. And you can have this too. So it's, it causes a, sh a shift, you know, in, in someone else too. And I feel like that's what, you know, happens with the work that you do. I feel like that's what happens with the work that I do. That's what happened. And not, I'm not just talking about like you as a photographer or me as, you know, mm -hmm. a, a spiritual coach or, or soul excavator. I'm talking about the work we do on ourselves, you know, like that constant exploration and discovery of self that continues to bolster self-acceptance and self-love mm -hmm. and self-care and expansion and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. It just, it can only then ripple out in a positive way, allowing others to, you know, feel that sort of stirring inside themselves or, and bring more of those kind of people into our life that then keep mm -hmm. that shift happening and keep that stirring and shaking up and, and, you know, that yeah. impulse to step out of our comfort zone to keep doing that ourselves too. So, yeah, well, I, I you know, when you say that it's, it's no, um, what do you call it? Uh, it's not coincidence. It's not coincidence that I am doing this work because it's the work I'm doing myself. And, you know, I just got really tired of feeling shitty about myself. And, you know, and I really, and then when I, you know, in my photography, I mean, I've been doing this, I guess now for 20 or almost 20 years. Um, but I've seen it time and time again with clients, you know, who just, you know, you can tell they just don't like who they see in the photographs and they don't, you know, have that self-acceptance. Um, and I really recognize it now because, you know, I mean, I'm still on the journey of self-acceptance. I'm not saying that I'm like 100%, <laughs> you know, we're all, um, you know, still becoming and all that kind of stuff. But um, I just got tired of it and I'm like, you know what, I'm tired of, um, yeah, like not doing the things that I want to do because of these limiting beliefs about myself. And, um, you know, and even when I have my, I mean, I've had photo shoots of myself and that's been really freeing too, because sure. I mean, yeah, I've had some bad pictures, but I mean, I look at those photos and I just go, you know, like that's still me. That's who I was in that moment. And that's okay. I'm okay. You know? Um, and that's a really, empowering place to be you know and that's where i want my clients to get to is you know come into it come into your photo shoot with that self-love and acceptance and excitement to really express yourself because that's when you're when you, you know when you fully express yourself um like you were a great example like you were just you know you came into it with that energy and just you know you have you know what I consider like, you know, that self-acceptance piece that um, I want everybody to have, you know, and just be super excited and just go, wow, yeah, that looks great. Okay. You know, maybe, maybe let's try this angle or, you know, like, I mean, do you know what I'm saying? Like, just be okay with it and not nitpick yourself, not say, oh, I'm so fat or I hate my hair or, oh my God, my makeup's terrible or I hate my nose, you know, like that's just it's not helpful. Right. And it's not empowering. And, um, yeah, there's just so much more to us. And, um, yeah, so I just kind of like got sick of, <laughs> um, that for myself, you know, like, okay, I'm just, this is me, this is how I show up and, you know, you know, on that note, was it? <laughs> I have to say we have a photo shoot coming up and I did just ask you to push it because my hair was not going to look oh. good because I, I, I messed up on the date for my hair appointment, right? Like, yeah, I no, that's okay. Camera. But yeah. it's like, you know, it's like, no, because for me, honestly, still at this point in my life from like when I was a teen, <clears throat> if I don't feel like my hair looks good, 
the rest of me just follows suit. It's the, it's, there's well, totally a belief wrapped up in there. Yeah. I'm aware of that, but like, you know, my hair is an extension of me. Well, you are right. Hair is important because it, it is, it is part of our, um, our look, you know, it kind of pulls everything together. Right. And um, I'm laughing if we know <laughs> for those who don't That's know, look too, right? <laughs> <laughs> Len doesn't have a lot of hair on his head. <laughs> yeah. Well, I know. I mean, I can relate. I mean, if I had long hair, I just I look terrible. Um, but so this is this is this is my look. And I mean, I I got bangs recently, but um, you know, yeah, you got to be kind of happy with your hair and and all that kind of stuff. But I mean, that's all surface stuff, right? Yeah. But I'm talking about the core. Yeah coming in and just being ready and you know just putting the energy into it yeah you know? and so speaking of energy and being ready and that self-acceptance and film yeah. this is something that you have actually incorporated yeah. into um a workshop that you have done once or twice um i think so far do you want to talk to people a little bit about that yeah so this was kind of brought about actually um because i had witnessed this type of thing, you know, a handful of times with clients um, who, you know, for whatever reason, like they just, they weren't totally happy with their photos. And I was just scratching my head going, oh my gosh, like these are awesome. You look amazing and da da da. And, um, but I knew in my heart it was because they didn't like themselves and who they saw in the photos. Mm -hmm. And I knew there was so much work to do. And I saw myself in them a little bit too, because, you know, I mean, <laughs> we've all had our picture taken. So I look, you know, I look back at old photos of myself and I remember thinking, you know, like hating them because, you know, I didn't like who I saw in the photos, basically. <laughs> and um, so, I mean, when I look back on those photos now, you know, I'm like, wow, I was so pretty. I was so like, I look great. I look amazing. I wish I could look like that now. <laughs> you know? um, so anyway, um, with, uh, it was actually in collaboration with um, another client of mine, Amy Leah Tamburini. She was a guest on my show, The Eloquent Entrepreneur. And we just started talking and um, we were talking about all this stuff like self-expression and self-acceptance. And I was like, wow, you know, this is something, because I kind of thought about it before, like it would be great to have like some kind of workshop or retreat where, you know, people would come in and they would, um, you know, we would work together on confidence boosting and, mm -hmm. you know, really kind of talking about limiting beliefs and, and these kind of core things um, that, that really get in our way of really, accepting who we are and um anyway so that's how the stepping into your essence one day retreat was born <laughs> we're like yeah let's do this and um she is she does circle dialogue and um which is like you know creating harmonious um conversations and um you know kind of deep comp deep exercises in um you know getting to the core of how you feel about yourself. And um, I mean, it's so much more than that. It's hard to explain, but <laughs> um, anyway, and then she brought in a friend of hers, Brett McDonald, who is a improvisation um, teacher. Mm -hmm. So uh, she helps people really like with risk taking and just putting themselves out there, expressing themselves um, in a really safe environment, playful environment. And yeah, so we had our first um, retreat in October. And um, it was really great because I got to participate in it. And so did my assistant, uh, Victoria. And then two of my clients who had already booked photo shoots. And it was just really magical. And just the, the, the transformations that occurred um, in all of us um, was amazing. Like just, that was, that was another, you know, piece of my puzzle too, um, that is contributing to why I'm here today. Like, okay, I, I just have that much more confidence to show up and, um, Anyway, so it's it's just a day of really, you know, being able to express yourself, talk about your feelings. Um, we have journaling exercises. We have, um, you know, the improvisational 
exercises and um, yeah, it was, oops, my phone just dropped. <laughs> um, yeah, it's, it's just a really magical day. And um, the next one, it's going to be, and um, yeah, I mean, you don't have to be a client of mine to join. You can. Linda, sorry, just you yeah. froze for a second. So we missed the date. So did you mention when the next one is going to be? Oh, right. Yeah. The next one is in March on March 12th in Victoria. Um, it is in person um, because we do need to have the ability to be in circle. So um, like sitting in circle and and then the improvisational stuff. So um, and it's limited to, I think, eight people. Um, and uh, of course, we'll be following all the protocols and everything for safety and stuff like that. So right. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. And one of the things that my clients told me that they really, really, you know, said made a huge difference was me doing it with them um, because it really sort of helped us connect right. more um, on an intimate level, you know, and that they felt comfortable with me and we were doing it together and they could really feel safe expressing themselves and, um, yeah. And then when it came time for their photo shoot, like, I mean, I really... I saw the energy shift um, in a huge way for both of them uh, and, you know, and of course, as a result, the photos were that much better, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So really, I mean, just, I keep hearing the words self-acceptance, connection. I keep thinking confidence um, and just all, and, and empowerment, like just empowerment, empowerment, and empowerment to just really be who we truly are, not just who we think we are, not just the labels, the stories, the expectations, ours or others, mm -hmm. um, you know, know, that we ascribe to, but our essence, you know, and so I even love the fact you're calling it stepping into your essence, you know, it's yeah, just I know. embracing and embodying who you yeah. are at your core, period. Yeah, that that title just came to me like instantly, because that's what it it really is. And um, like a couple of, like I said, two of my clients did it. And one of them is just, I could just see like during the whole, uh, like during the workshop, like, you know, and you could just see the wheels turning and it was just amazing to watch her transformation in particular. And I see her now just, she's really, she's putting herself out on video talking and really expressing herself and embracing, um, herself and her business. And, you know, because she's got, you know, we all have our gifts, right? And if we, yeah. if we don't <clears throat> say who we are, you know, I'm an example of it. Like, I'm, you know, finally, <laughs> I mean, I've kind of put myself out there over the years, but it's still, you know, it's, ter it's scary, right, for, for us. And, um, yeah, so it's really, that's just so rewarding for me to see somebody like that, that this actually made a difference in her life. And she's really embracing herself and... You know, there's no like, oh my God, what are people gonna think? Or, you know, like she's just doing it, you know? And that's the point. That's really the point. Yeah, doing so. it even even when you do think, what are people gonna think? Just doing it anyway. I mean, there's yeah. the confidence, there's the empowerment to just move forward despite, you know, all of those stories or limiting beliefs that might still be, you know, like nattering and niggling away kind of thing. Mahoney, I keep sort of looking over at you and every now and then I see like maybe there's like a glimmer or something, but this is one of those rare times when Glenn hasn't said a word oh. and we're more than half an hour in. So how yeah. much did you want to What are you thinking? <laughs> okay. Tell thinking me. lots. So, <laughs> and it's like I'm piecing something together here as, as I'm listening to both of you give different... Um, uh, perspectives on more or less the same um, point, but the word, like Lassie, you said empowerment and and Linda, your mentoring kind of recent activities. The word that comes up for me is more um, like encouragement, like making sure people know they have, like they can be courageous, right? They can step yeah. up step into as you said Big time. and so that's what i'm getting so the what i was going to ask you earlier and I, I i think you've answered some of it is that 
thing that people do when when they have been doing the same thing for a long time and and the so-called putting in the ten thousand hours to perfect their craft you know um you know writers do it painters do it photographers do it mm -hmm. and speakers do it people who who speak for a living whatever so yeah now what what's sort of dawning on me here is that when you do that stuff and you make it look so easy like not just lassie's pictures or the ones you did of our daughter where you just look at it and you go wow like she's really captured the essence of who i know this person to be you know mm. uh, and and i guess it's more like the essence of the the uh, subject of the photograph who they know themselves po what they're capable of right so w what it's done on me is that the, at the other stuff we're talking about about what we're being encouraged to do and and being reminded of that we're capable of so much more than just the one story or narrative that we tell ourselves like oh this is what I do I am this I'm that I, I'm good at this thing you know Mm -hmm. but there what it's almost like when when you're a child and you are loved and you're brought into the world and you're integrated into the family in in obviously different ways for each person those moments that the child knows like my inner child knows that oh i'm loved i i like it here it's lovely it's funny you get to laugh you get to bump your head and get up and someone will give you a hug and you know like so there's this there's this sort of almost equivalent of the 10,000 hours of knowing that I am divine or I am you know I'm part of I'm meant to be here to do my thing you know so when it's growing all the time because you can't do everything as your child you you have to uh, take these these baby steps and go out into the world right yeah and and explore and try and you know fail and get up and you know but what what we do is it's almost like then a a door comes down or a, a wall and we forget you know for a period of time then we, we then we get just mesmerized by this other story that people start telling us about oh you you know go you're too loud or you're too this or you know go away and then you mm -hmm. start believing that that story and then later on in life, people who, for whatever reason, remind you of what you're capable of and how beautiful you are and, you know, what an amazing friend you are. Those are like little glimpses back into what our child knew, you know. So mm -hmm. it's almost like you're then adding new moments or hours to your already stored up, you know, um, series of of moments knowing that it's all good i'm i'm fine i'm a i'm a wonderful person i've got something to contribute but you know it's it's kind of weird because it's like it's like a picture is cut in half or, or like a foot or like a, a you know a glass picture on glass and you kind of you got half of it is perfect or a third of it and then the rest is all these little shards and you're putting them back together but really, you know, you're you who you are in this picture. Like, that's what I'm getting out of this this thing of like the mentorship, the friendship, and and what you're doing, and what Lassie does with her um, her uh, you know in person and online mentoring. Yes. Basically, you're. It's important work because it's especially if it's done in person. It's smaller groups. The energy is sort of better when it's kind of more intimate, mm -hmm. and you it's it's more real than something like a you know like a mass kind of going to the movies or something where it's just like kind of sterile and like oh okay that was fun for two hours sort of because it was noisy and i didn't like that part and whatever but when you have an intimate um experience with another person in a group in a small you know one-on-one -on -one or three people whatever mm -hmm. you're like it's imp important work and I think that's why social media is developing the way it is and and these new platforms mm -hmm. because you can you can impact a lot of people or you can impact one person and it's huge even if you impact one person it is absolutely huge because you don't know what they're 
then doing they who they're impacting you know so yeah exactly yeah um i <laughs> it makes me think of like you know like we're all i'm still the little girl i'm still linda the little girl and it just i i it, this work is um it always brings me back to that because i always like remember myself um as being totally okay with myself <laughs> when i was a kid you know i was super expressive um you know according to my whoever whoever i was a bit over the top i was quite boisterous and loud and this that and the other but i was really confident and really opinionated and i mean i was even called bossy once you know <laughs> um so that is i guess as you're talking about that stuff it, it makes me realize like, that is a key part of this work and even when i'm photographing people like i can I think that's the highly sensitive person in me and that's another story um, which has been a really major life-changing realization for me because um, I've always been very highly sensitive. Um, it doesn't mean I'm a crybaby or anything. It's, it's, it means that I'm very highly compassionate, empathic, um, very aware of other people's feelings and um, I don't know for lack of a better term like essence like i just can feel who people are and that's why i have such an interest in my clients and wanting to get to know them and do all the pre-work um because it's for me to really get a, an understanding of who that person is and really at the core of each of us is the little boy or the little girl that we want to bring out because i mean although we have ten thousand hours of our whatever vocation we go into and we're learning and you know we're always becoming and everything but that little person is still within us and you know has that true authentic confidence and just self-awareness which is another buzzword but it's i find that self-awareness is lacking in a lot of ways um these days but being like just in the moment and in our core joy Right. And that's kind of what I would love to see. And that's what I saw when I started my career and photographing people, like just seeing their core, seeing that little boy or little girl inside them and that real sense of who they are. And um, I don't know where I'm going with this, but like it's it's when we and then when we have a place where because like, you know, like I was saying in my experience, um, you know, I had my own beliefs, but then slowly but surely I would have people, whether it was my parents or other people, kids, you know, I had, I was bullied when I was in grade six, you know, and that was, that was, um, you know, some of these things are very impactful. So then you start to believe everybody else and you tell yourself that you're wrong. You're not a good person. You are this, that, the other, and you start believing what everybody else tells you. And um, so then we have to, like you said, <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> um, how did you say it? But like, we have to like, basically, you know, retrain our brains and our hearts and, you know, start bringing those, bringing that child back again, you know, that, that yeah. real pure confidence and um, sense of self, I think. Yeah, that, that, um, cause the infinite possibilities thing, that's what childhood is, right? Yes. That, like you, as you said, you liked being you and I certainly, I mean, I've had a lot of those memories of like, just really pure happiness about whatever it was, you know, and part of that is just the experience you're going through, but part of it is like enjoying being who you are, you know, being, being the, like, I'm in a pretty large family. So being the the youngest or, you know, mm -hmm. the shortest or whatever it is, that like certain type of things have advantages, you know, and you, you just sort of, you would, you would be able to kind of, um, just purely enjoy 
being fill in the blank of your name because you know in, in my estimation like you we each choose who we are and who our siblings and parents are because you know we all want to have challenges to overcome you know mm -hmm. but sometimes i think maybe we we have set up uh or sometimes the way it looks to me is that we maybe put too many obstacles in our way and then it it, it kind of knocks the wind out of us and we it takes a lot to get back up and like <laughs> you know, move through it and go, no, I, I can actually overcome these things, you know. Um, but, and by the way, you're saying about being bossy, you, unless you live in this family, you have no idea what bossy means. So, <laughs> I've got it from both sides. <laughs> and but, it's okay to be bossy sometimes. That's how we get things done, right? <laughs> sir. Yeah. Way to be what diplomatic. <laughs> Yeah. I have a bossy yeah. husband too, so yeah, <laughs> and yeah. child actually. <laughs> yeah, that's what I mean. Like, yeah. yeah, we can all be bossy, but it's you know, it's, it's again, it's another side of how we express ourselves, right? And yeah. you know, it's because we care and we we want to make sure, you know, <laughs> we want things to get done right. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm telling you, this is the right way to do it because I love you. you know? <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> I did have something in mind and then it just totally threw me off thing. The, the <laughs> thing that comes to mind when you guys it's it's I'm 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 really sort of like opening my mind to to hearing you guys talking about this because for me, I even though I know I had a, a good childhood, I don't have a lot of happy memories. My my memory of childhood is very patchy for me. And mm. so so for me, it's, you know, it kind of, a, a little while ago in the conversation, Linda, you said something about how you can go back and look at pictures of yourself now and just say, you know, I, I was, I was so beautiful or I'm so beautiful, you know, back then. And, and I think for me, that's more like what the work is. It's not so much to remember the kind of joy or freedom that I might have been experiencing as a child because I don't feel like I did. Um, mm -hmm. But to, from where I am now, go back and change my relationship, you know, be able to change my relationship or perspective to what happened. I mean, as I'm reading through my book, again for my editor and i'm reading through these stories and vignettes that that are you know uh, illustrating fear failure and and faith and then the realizations and spiritual you know lessons that came as a result of of my spiritual consciousness studies and the reframing of all of those things that happened in the past now that's that's what it's like for me is to sort of you know that's how i'm seeing that no matter what happened, even not because of what happened or things unfolded the way they did so that I could get to a point where I could look and not make it trite and seem like there was a silver lining or, or even necessarily see the gift in it, but see that just because an experience happened and felt a certain way at the time and I remembered those feelings and latched onto those feelings and grounded myself in those feelings for many, many years afterwards, even though that event happened back then kind of thing, mm -hmm. that I don't need to go forward feeling that same way or being anchored in those negative feelings or beliefs about that event that I can now reframe with more because I have more understanding and, and I mm -hmm. know I feel more empowered. I feel more grounded in who and what I am and the infinite possibilities that that are the essence of me, you know, to use your languaging. I can look back at those experiences now without feeling like a failure, without feeling scared, without feeling hurt, without feeling wounded. Mm -hmm. um, there it can be emotional sometimes still but that emotional that emotion comes mm -hmm. more from from the scar than the wound so to speak so you know that and, and that's i think why digging into oneself and like really exploring who and what we are is so important and yes it can mm -hmm. inspire others and yes it does impact those around us and we have no idea you know what 
us having a conversation with someone and then that person going out into the world and whoever they interact with, how that conversation is <coughs> out into the world. Honey Wench, it takes me back to when we had Rick Tamlin on the show. And, and this is something that he sort of says quite often is you really have no clue what your relationship or your interaction with someone, how that's going to go out and impact, you know, someone else in the world or how many millions of people kind of thing. So, so for me, I just, you know, I keep hearing as we're having this conversation about how important it really is to just keep immersing ourselves into this becoming, keep exploring mm -hmm. keep <clears throat> into who and what we are beyond the labels to still appreciate the labels and the roles and the things we play, because mm -hmm. all of that makes up our personality, which makes up how we, you know, express ourselves and our perhaps seen by others in our life. Yeah. <clears throat> but underneath it all, that's the driving force. And when we can tap into that creativity, that energy, that essence, then that allows us to keep becoming more of who and what we innately are anyway. And mm -hmm. when there are reminders around us in people, our family, our community, in nature, in having our photograph taken and seeing a side of ourselves that maybe we aren't as familiar with or didn't see, or or even when it yeah. when it feels kind of negative, like how many times have you heard in your life, oh no no don't don't, don't take a picture of me, you know, like I, I don't yeah. want a picture taken, like how and, and when you say women especially, like when I think of that, there are more women than men that will go, you know, I don't look good or whatever. I don't want my face, you know, I kind of thing. And, and to me, it's mm. like, okay, all right. But that's just another, that's opportunity knocking saying, Hey, there's something to yeah. look at here because you're not just that photograph. You're not just that, you know, Oh, don't look at me kind of thing. You are so much more. And it's always, always available and accessible to you. You just want to, you, it's just it's up to you whether or not you're gonna you know take a look and explore yeah exactly right. yeah that brings to mind like um I, I mentioned I was bullied when I was in grade six and it just that was another pivotal moment in my life because that was really impactful on me like it was just another thing to make me feel shitty about myself and um but it makes me think of how important like perspective and the understanding of we're all on this journey of self-discovery and self-awareness and self-expression and acceptance. And sometimes we forget that, right? We forget that we're all kind of on our own little journeys, right? And, and then we've got that expectation too of how we think people should react to us or treat us or, and all that stuff. So um, I actually ran into one of the kids that was the, one of the, you know, the lead bullies. <laughs> And it was just like a really eye-opening thing because um, I just met him. Like I was, I was visiting a friend um, who worked at a restaurant. We were sitting there having a drink, and then he shows up, and I'm like, "Oh my God, hi!" And you know, it'd been many years, right? This was grade six that this happened. Uh, <laughs> anyway, we just started chatting and having a great time, and you know, he was very nice and you know, asking me all about my life and all this other stuff. And then I said, do you remember <laughs> in grade six when you and a bunch of other boys taunted me and you were so mean to me? And I, I, told, I explained to him, I was totally, you know, told him everything that how it affected me. And he was like, he had no idea. He had, he couldn't even remember mm -hmm. that he had even done that. Um, so that was like, what? You know, like, our realities were completely on a different page yeah. and he was so apologetic. He's like, Oh my God, like, I'm so sorry. I didn't, you know, I had no idea that, you know, that affected you so much and we didn't, you know, and I was just like, wow, are you serious? <laughs> you know, like, um, and then it was just, you know what? I was like, okay. And I forgave him. And, you know, that was a huge moment in my life because I was like, okay. Um, and I tried to rationalize it over the years. Oh, it's because they like me. That's why they're bugging me and this, that, and the other. And that was probably the case because, you know, you know, when you're a kid, especially, you know, boys, they try to get girls' attention by just, you know, poking at them and bugging them and stuff like that, right? <laughs> and so that's what I told myself over the years, you know. And um, 
anyway, it was just, it's just a real eye opener and that, you know, we're all kind of on these different journeys. And then the other piece about perspective and, um, you know, how we're always becoming, we're always going to be, um, seen differently by people in our lives, you know, and we, people wonder why they, you know, their friendships dissolve or this, that, and the other. And it's, it's, you know, because we are becoming and, you know, we grow as people and sometimes those people that we were a certain way with, we outgrow them, right? Or we just not necessarily outgrow them, but we become different so that they can't relate to us anymore. And, you know, that's happened to me, you know, and I'm sure you guys too, like just, you know, it's just part and parcel of the becoming piece. And, you know, I mean, in the, in the good and the bad, like, you know, like if you're feeling more confident and uh, sure of yourself and maybe with so-and-so you weren't that and now they see you and they can't relate to you anymore. Does that make sense? Like I'm oh, kind of yeah. rambling here, but um, I know I've seen it a lot on social media. There's been a few posts about this in particular, you know, um, and they're just at, maybe they're at the same place in their life when they knew you, but you're not. And, you know, um, and that's okay. And you'll have kind of like, it, it was an upsetting thing for me for a while because, you know, that's ha that happened to me. You know, I lost or, you know, lost friends that I thought I would have for life. And, but now I'm, I'm like, okay, well, I can't help that because I have a higher purpose. Yeah. It, and and just I mean Glenn I know you're gonna jump in there the one and because I can totally relate to that and there's at least <clears throat> one person that comes to mind for me when mm -hmm. still every now and then I'm like what happened there you know I would yeah. love to have her in my life but more often than not what I will do is I will just be grateful grateful for the time that we were in each other's lives grateful for how we supported each other and the friendship um you know that lasted and unfolded the way that it did <clears throat> even yeah. though there is a part of me sorry frog in my throat <clears throat> that would have liked for it to continue yeah for her to be present in my life now but for me when i can't make sense of that and know that i could easily spiral down the rabbit hole of oh my god what happened did i do something you know whatever like there's got to be a logical explanation it's like, mm -hmm. whoa, and almost part of like Ho'oponopono that Glenn and I have, have really started practicing a lot lately, which is just to be grateful, to just, mm -hmm. you know, acknowledge, you know, the, the beauty in the friendship, um, you know, as it was, and even as it is now, because I can remember, you know, our friendship from a few years ago for the, you know, few years that we were in each other's lives, you know, a lot. Um, mm -hmm. with just immense, profound gratitude. So I just wanted to yeah. the gratitude in the, because I feel like that's yeah. been kind of on the <clears throat> periphery, but hasn't come into our conversation yet. So anyway, honey bunch. Yeah, you want to pop that's in there? huge. <laughs> um, yeah, just back to the, um, <clears throat> you're saying about your, uh, workshop there. So were they, the, uh, Brett McDonald, you said was the guy who does the improv girl yeah she's oh. a girl yeah girl. She, so um yeah. that may be news to anyway so <laughs> see i improvised there oh there you my go. god see what i did there <laughs> i guess i should have specified she was a female yeah, yeah. <laughs> she is a female i should say um so mm -hmm. in that setting with with improv one of the main rules being uh, like you yes and people like you don't you you keep the flow going you can't say no I'm out like you got to keep going so you somehow yeah. you you incorporate and integrate what you've just heard into like now your thread of the story and then it carries on right mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's one of the exercises we do Something okay very yeah similar to that yeah because mm -hmm. yes, it's because it really does it, it it's a great prompt i think to pull people into the playful mode because play is huge in terms of um mm -hmm. again it's in our child's tool belt it's like oh i can play you know any anyone can play but some somehow people have forgotten how to do that right um or they've forgotten they 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 know they're completely capable of being like whatever a jokester a prankster a, um, a goof 
and just or just like sometimes they they limit it to like why well, i only do that when i'm with my dog or my cat or whatever um mm. but the what i'm th pulling it back to what lassie was saying too the yes and thing in improv it's similar to uh in the paul levy book um that we talked about a few times and we talked to paul levy um the quantum revelation where in quantum world it's it's both and it's like you it's it's like wave and particle it's both you know you you can't just say it's this or because it is actually both in both states it's just that if you're the more you pay attention to it the more particle lo like it looks like or it appears um mm -hmm. but it's actually both so then you can you can riff on that as well you know, like you can you can you can uh use i think use that as a a method of where am i going here so if you're in if you're in a uh locked into one story about like who you are what you're capable of i'm i'm trained as this kind of person uh and i've trained myself as this kind of person not just that i'm an accountant or you know uh, uh I, I do amazing cakes or whatever um so but you if you're able to kind of use that as a mantra of like um and even the the gratitude thing it's like surely we all can be grateful for something in in any experience you know like if you if you've lost touch with a person if you really didn't like an experience or a job there must have been something that you can be grateful for right and that's just a way to to continue on or like yes and and bring it into the next kind of part of your you know, like it's like hopping over um a, a stream or something <laughs> like you need to jump on a rock and like get across somehow right yeah um, exactly yeah i think that ties in with that whole like you know the relationship thing or like when we you know maybe you've lost friends for whatever reason because but i think that's like your your what's the saying your friends with this friends for a season and for a reason i don't know what it is <laughs> I'll look it up <laughs> but, yeah i can't remember now but anyway the point is that yeah like um all these it's like everything happens for a reason and so do all the people in our lives and the things and um they're there for um for a reason or for a season i don't know anyway <laughs> Remember. It's almost like you're going to burst into song. <laughs> I don't know. Um, yeah. Yeah. Where am I going? Yeah, yeah. Like just like everybody, like it's, they're all there for a reason. And that, and that they're there, everything's there to teach you something and to get you to where you are. And is that what kind of what you were talking about? Yeah. It, it, yeah. It, it gets like, it brings us back to our preferences. Cause that's the other thing is like, within, the problem with infinite is like, yeah, it's a little bit too big. You, you need to, you need to Got find, a <laughs> Make a find choice. ways to prompt yourself uh, mm -hmm. and funnel yourself into this is what I'm going to do because I don't like this on this side and I don't like that on the other side. So this is where I'm going to be at the moment. But it's it's all too easy to kind of um, either get flustered or overwhelmed by too much of too much possibilities. Um, but this this idea of um, of being like if you're not your true self you're mm -hmm. you're going to have um like you're just spinning your wheels right you're not getting anywhere um yeah. but if if you if you are through personal interaction with someone else able to focus down into just like even if you're in a panic mode everyone knows how to breathe you know so just breathe and be thankful <laughs> that you can mm -hmm. breathe in and you can breathe out and like just do that and then something will reconnect you know um whether it's gratitude or uh, you know you see someone smiling or whatever there's something that will bring you back to alignment with with who you are i think so, exactly yeah 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 i've learned to i mean uh, one of my good friends christine monahan i mean she always had this um saying like slow down to move ahead and that's always stuck with me mm. um because you know all too often especially nowadays with social media there's the fomo thing happening and we're all trying to like 
be seen and heard and like, you know, um, we don't want to miss out on stuff or, you know, all that stuff. Um, but yeah, like that rushing around and, you know, can really get in the way of connecting with our true selves and our purpose and what we're here to do and, and the joy that comes along with everything. So that we can be grateful for everything we have and the people in our lives and stuff like that so that's something that I'm trying to integrate more in my life is just really slow down breathe there's I'm not missing anything you know yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna be present for the things that I'm meant to be present for yeah. and my big word for this year actually is courage and um, <laughs> Uh, I don't know if you listen to Brene Brown, but I love Brene Brown. Um, but the whole like vulnerability piece, you know, like courage in French, like le corps is heart. And mm -hmm. if you look it up in the dictionary, it'll tell you, you know, it's related to our heart and vulnerability is so tied to that. And so, um, yeah, that's, that's my big word for this year because it's like, okay, like I said, I'm, this is it. Um, I don't have much time left. <laughs> I have lots to do and I, there's no time to be, um, you know, scared and <laughs> holding myself back, you know, like it's, it's time to have the courage and, you know, be vulnerable. Like, you know, I've shared a few things here and on Facebook recently, you know, like, okay, that's something that I've been terrified to do my whole life. And, but now it's like, you know what, I want people to know who I am. I want people to see me as I truly am. Um, and that's, I think, you know, I think I'm not alone. I think a lot of people feel the same way. And that's part of the trepidation or, or fear or um, about having their photos taken. You know, people are afraid to be seen um, as they truly are. And I want to ch help change that, um, if that makes sense, you know because I think it's really the biggest thing getting in all our ways to actually making that difference in the world. Because if we're not ourselves, how can we, you know, it's not true, it's not real, it's not authentic if we're not being ourselves um, in our best, in our, at our best, you know, at our, the best versions of ourselves. Um, yeah. yeah. Are, honey, much of you, uh, Linda, is there music playing in the background where you are? Where no. Are you music from? Honey, much is there a window open? Weird. I'm not okay. hearing any music here. I hear, I hear music. Um, okay. Anyway, yeah. No courage and vulnerability. I, um, as you were talking, Linda, it really it made me think um, back to a phrase that Maria Namath actually uses that I really like, which is trouble at the border and trouble at the border being sort of the the line between where we are now versus where we want to be or you know how we're showing up versus who we truly are and that mm -hmm. that in crossing the border you know you can still be terrified you can still be nervous you can still <clears throat> not know what's going to happen you know as you go over that border but you do it anyway <laughs> that you you muster and that despite you know all of the you know terrified feelings and being scared and nervous and yeah. anxious and whatever you plow through anyway because there yeah. is there is whatever like life is either you're, you're sick and tired of feeling sick and tired or you know you can be more or you're just like you you you're uncomfortable enough with where you are that there's something pushing you to cross that border and and to me that's where courage and vulnerability lie is just like mm -hmm. at that border when yeah. <laughs> whether it's just for yourself or you're sharing it with you know your family around you or you're sharing it with the world but yeah. ultimately in order to push yourself out of your comfort zone across that border you're still battling with the trouble so to speak but you're you're doing mm -hmm. it no matter what because ultimately the courage and the vulnerability is going to get you that much closer to who and what you truly are to begin with. And as you do it mm -hmm. once, 
then you have a memory of that for when the next border comes yeah, up, you know, exactly. or when the yeah. next you know, sort of layer <laughs> of the comfort zone comes up. Yeah. And, and you get better and better and better at it, you know, until mm-hmm. you're just, you're doing it, you know, like sort of subconsciously oh. and, and automatically and not having to think about it as much. And yeah. so, you know, I, I love that. Yeah. And we've talked about it a few times already that your word for the year is courage. And I yeah. uh, have seen some of the posts that you've put on Facebook and we have, you know, talked about some stuff. Yeah. On. And it's just um, like, it's extraordinarily empowering to be vulnerable. It, even though it can feel mm-hmm. terrifying and, and like you have no idea what's going to happen when you really, really put yourself out there in a very candid, forthright, honest way, because you're opening yourself up to whatever but you're yeah. also proving to yourself that it doesn't matter what anybody else thinks because I'm fucking awesome. <laughs> yeah, that's right? the huge realization. I mean, um, <laughs> yeah. yeah, just that whole piece of what are people going to think and, you know, all that kind of stuff. I mean, that was me this morning. As you know, it's been a long time coming. <laughs> I think I had I canceled maybe once or twice because I mean exactly because of that I was terrified to do what we're doing right now and and just even this morning I had no idea what I was going to say <laughs> and, and no matter how many times I said it's just a conversation it'll <laughs> flow the way it flows I mean yeah. honestly I mean most of the people we've had on the show are people we know at least a little bit if not you know mm-hmm. fairly well Um, And there are still days when I wake up and I'm like, oh my God, what's it going to be like? Is anybody going to listen? But ultimately, you know, it doesn't matter to me because this is something, I mean, not, no, that's not true. It does matter to me because I really value and appreciate everyone who engages with us and gives us some of their valuable time and attention. Um, But ultimately, Glenn and I do this because we want to do this and we do this together it's a way for us to engage together it's something that we Mm -hmm. get to do with each other and and we feel that whether it's you know two people or a thousand people or a million people it's that thing Mm -hmm. that notion of you know we're having a conversation that is meaningful for us and then yeah we go out into the world our guest goes out into the world our podcast goes out into the world perhaps someone else might find some value in there and it might impact them, you know, in a way that is helpful and supportive and encouraging um, and even empowering maybe for them. And, mm-hmm. and it just, for us, it, it helps us too, you know, like it, it, it just, oh, totally. every single yeah. conversation, I learn something, I am inspired. And, and just like in the intro, you know, every single time I get to reevaluate and reconsider <laughs> how I'm thinking, what I'm thinking about, how am I showing up in the world? And even in listening to you, I'm feeling really inspired to, you know, do some more stuff on social media, which I have to say, I don't like at all. <laughs> I really like, I, I am an extrovert. I love speaking in front of people. I love being out there, but I do not like posting on social media. <laughs> that is just a way oh, I don't like spending yeah. my time. I don't, I don't hang out on social media very often. And Mm -hmm. I just, I, I would rather, I have other stuff I'd rather do, but it's like, no, in order to engage and meet new people and build that global community founded in love that is part of my why, well, that social media is a tool that is a very useful and engaging tool right now. So I feel very inspired by you right now. Well, I've, I felt the same way about social media. I'll speak to that first, but I want to talk about like, just while it's in my head, like this whole, um, You know, I mean, it's really important to, you know, like the whole idea of like, what other people are we going to like, is somebody going to listen to this podcast? I don't know, like, you know, what are people going to think and everything? And um, one other thing that I thought of, like a dear friend of mine said to me a long time ago, um, it mainly pertained to the work, like I was doing my makeup, I was a makeup artist for many years, and and even my photography work, like, as long as you like it, there's going to be at least one other person that's going to like it too. And that's always stuck with me because it is really important to love what you do and do it because of that, because you love it. Because if you love it, chances are somebody else is going to like it too. And that's stuck with me like my whole career. And um, I mean, it's easy to, you know, copy what other people are doing or, you know, 
Um, but it's really important to follow your creative heart, your your joy, what the, the things that you that make you unique, and all that kind of stuff. And you know, as long as you do that, <laughs> you're gonna feel fulfilled and grateful. And then, you know, whoever's witness to that, you know, some people may not like it, but you know, chances are. <laughs> They will. A lot of people will, right? So um, <clears throat> uh, that's always stuck with me, and it served me well because otherwise I wouldn't create. I would just always be thinking about is somebody, you know, they're gonna like this, you know? And I, I just haven't really cared, which is, you know, <laughs> kind of uncharacteristic because I'm, I'm a very caring person, and I, you know, care a lot what people think. Um, but when it comes to my work and the stuff that I create with my clients and and, and even my personal work. Um, and just, you know, all the things that I'm doing, like, um, sure, there's a million mentors out there. There's a million coaches. There's a million podcasters, right? But we, we're doing it because it brings us joy and we know it's going to impact at the very least one other person, right? So, um, and then the whole social media thing. <laughs> um, yeah, I can totally relate to that because I've had a love-hate relationship with it. And I know a lot of people do, but... Um, I've had a few people recently who have kind of said a few kind of aha things to me <laughs> about social media and it's like um, uh, one person, actually one of my neighbors, she's like, just enjoy it. Just enjoy it. You know, it is the way we market ourselves now. It's the way we um, communicate socially. It's, it's one half of the equation, right? There's in person and there's online. Right. So um, I'm trying to embrace it more and just enjoy it and, you know, actually, yeah, like express myself more authentically. Because I think for a while there it was like, hi, I'm a photographer. Here's my services, you know. Mm -hmm. But now it's more, you know, oh, I had this amazing shoot the other day and this is how the client, you know, my, my subject was expressing herself, you know, like it's more like, just like you would tell a friend, you know, about what you're doing. And um, so I'm, I'm starting to enjoy it <laughs> more. And it is it is making a difference. I mean, and, and the other thing is that it is a long game. It's a long game. You have to be consistent. Um, you know, it's not, I have people saying, you know, other friends and, you know, entrepreneurs are like, oh yeah, I posted and I got nothing. And I'm like, well, you gotta keep doing, you know, like it's not gonna, you're not gonna get a million followers right away and you're not gonna have like clients, you know, <laughs> breaking down your door. You know, it's a consistent thing. And um, so, yeah, it's it's just like, I mean, it, our generation, it's, it's, it's different, right? So <laughs> it's, like the millennials and the whatever Z generation. I mean, it's just a part of their daily lives, right? right. But for us, it's like, it's a, it can be a slog, but I think it's, again, it comes back to perspectives and, um, and yeah. choice. I mean, you and just choice. said, your friend said, you know, just, just make it joyful, you know, just find yeah. the joy in it. And that's, that's a choice. And we're always not only at choice, we've said it before, we're always choosing you know, and either you're choosing with awareness, you know, or you're just choosing mindlessly. And so mm -hmm. that's a conscious decision to be made, you know, on my part, at least is how am I going to embrace social media? Am I going to embrace it with, you know, oh, this is something I have to do or yeah. find the joy and value in it. And, and I've found the joy and value and many other, you know, seemingly mediocre or, you know, mm, meaningless is not the word that I want here, but tedious, tedious task. Mm, yeah. Um, and, and so, yeah, so yeah, that's that, that, that right there, you know, great reminder, great opportunity <laughs> to just shift my perspective and, um, and find the joy yeah. and value in it. I mean, I, and, and the joy really, cause I can see the value in it, but yeah. it's the joy and, and to, you know, give up or let go of some other things, which maybe do bring me joy, but are they really valuable? So, you know, like to yeah. continually explore, investigate question and, um, and become. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, well, yeah. And even this arena of, you know, podcasting and, and video interviews and, you know, like even my own, I mean, that was one of the reasons I did my interview series because I wanted to uh, 
well, A, highlight change makers and entrepreneurs making a difference and all that. Um, but it was also for personal reasons because I wanted to express myself. I wanted to put myself out there. I want people to get to know me, um, hear me talk. I'm a better talker than a writer. So like, yeah, to like write captions on social media is like, it's torturous sometimes because, you know, <laughs> so now I kind of try to make it work and enjoy it by I'll verbalize it first and then I'll like record it and then I'll just cut and paste, like I'll transcribe it. And then, so that seems to work better for me, <laughs> you know, but, um, but yeah, just embracing all the technology we have at our fingertips to express ourselves, to put ourselves out there. Um, because, you know, literally the world is online and you know, that's the arena now. Um, and hopefully we'll get back to more in-person stuff, but um, it's it's just, it's here to stay, right? So we kind of have no choice if we want to like um, yeah. get our message out, right? Yeah. This, um, it's an interesting time. Like I, I look at the uh, analytics for <clears throat> uh, our podcast is audio only through the Simplecast um uh, platform so and it, then it goes out to you know apple and amazon and all those guys pandora i think yeah and so it tells you you know just even with the basic sort of package we we have it's like it tells you the little, little map of the the world and it's like mm -hmm. flattened out but it's like this is yeah. who you listen to you in the last you know either seven days or month or forever or whatever and just seeing like these places from all over the world where like someone in Shenzhen province in China somehow at least two or three times has like listened to our podcast. Yeah, <laughs> like, I know. Isn't that amazing? What's that all about? Yeah. So, you know, <laughs> although it's like the, the tension and the paradox of like, we want to do things locally and actually not ver rather than virtually. Um, but for some reason doing what if you especially if you do something that you love as you said mm -hmm. at least one other person will love it um then it's, it's strange that like someone in australia or in you know england or whatever will be <clears throat> just oh this is good you know and they come back for more and they come back for more and you think well that's amazing i don't even know what the, is going on like i i, yeah. don't, I may <laughs> never ever encounter this person um, but for some reason it just pops up and it's like, oh, wow, I, I, I inspired someone to do, um, their version of what I'm doing, you know, like it's really incredible. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, and I just had a conversation with somebody who was a potential client and you just never know how you're impacting someone's life. Like we got on the zoom call and we ended up talking for two hours, but I mean, he immediately jumped into like, oh my God, I'm so inspired by what you're doing and I love what you're doing. And it was just like it just came like as a bit of a shock you know a surprise you know yeah. so i was like wow and it was really you know obviously um you know complimentary and empowering for me like i mean you know but it's mm -hmm. it just came as a, a big surprise so i mean that's a real testament to when you do follow your heart and you express right. yourself and you do all these things you never know who you're going to reach or touch in or how it's going to resonate with people um, unless, you know, they tell you, but you can rest assured that person in China, <laughs> um, you yeah. know, was watching for a reason and they were getting something out of it, you know, and whatever that is, but you can be assured it's something positive, right? And, uh, you know, yeah. it's resonating with them on some I, level. <laughs> yeah. Like, I don't even know how it's possible because somehow it's like, um, you know, I, they have a whole different system of, you know, their own version of Google and all that stuff, right? <clears throat> um, but yeah, it's and, and and if we can inspire and be inspired by people locally, um, like that's the whole deal. Mm -hmm. Like, because you're gonna you're gonna impact, you're gonna feel the actual energy of people locally, or like talking to your neighbor or whatever. Um, like that's, mm -hmm. you know, you're breathe, you're literally breathing the same air almost, you know so it's yeah it's kind of cool that way but yeah i, I think you're <laughs> I, have, I haven't even seen these things and i'm i'm inspired by them so it's just listening to you talk <laughs> about them it's great 
Yeah. Well, I love that idea of energy because you're, you know, all the stuff for creating energy. When I do photo shoots, there's an energy exchange, the collaboration. There's, you know, speaking across the world. I had a, a guest on my podcast. It's going to air um, later, but we did a rec- pre-recorded interview with her and um, she's in Australia. She was my first guest that was international, you know, so we're just like, and the energy was just so amazing, you know, like, and um, I just, I'm a high believer in the whole energy. We're all energy. We, uh, it's always an energy exchange. And even, you know, your podcasts reaching the person in China, like, you know, you're, you're Mm -hmm. communicating through energy. And, uh, you know, it sounds all woo woo, but (laughs) I know you're, on board <laughs> yeah we're all about the woo woo here yeah yeah <laughs> done with woo woo that makes it seem like it's you know like no but it's real it is valid and it yeah. is it is so incredible scientifically valid. proven we're energy so That's right Every yeah. I'm not actually touching Nothing. this cup you know, that's a whole it's other just a denser form of energy. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. So we are going to, I think, start to wrap things up a little bit. So mm-hmm. we're going to move into the next segment. Honey Bunch, are you ready? Yeah. Oh. Okay. So this, Linda, <laughs> um, is called the super rapid fire question round, where Glenn is going to bombard you with questions for one minute and you just answer top of mind it's just a fun playful way of getting to know you a little bit better okay no deep thought or anything just answer what comes up you know first and okay um, you guys are gonna have one minute and let me i'm glad you didn't tell me about this (laughs) (laughs) canceling (laughs) no um okay stopwatch one Okay, Honey Bunch, are you ready? Yeah. And go. Okay, Linda, do you sing in the shower? Sometimes. Okay, which do you prefer, Instagram or Telegram? Instagram. Okay, Doctor Who or Dr. Seuss? Dr. Seuss. Uh, Are you an introvert or an extrovert? Both. Okay, do you prefer the 21st or the 20th century? Oh, gosh. Quick. Ah, 21st. Okay, 21st. Yes. Fire fire or water? Ooh, water. Swearing or hitting a pillow? Swearing. Getting your child's art or eating their cooking? (laughs) Getting their art. Okay, would you prefer a magic wand or a time machine? Time machine. Black and white photography or color photography? Color. Books or movies? Movies. Family night or date night? <clears throat> oh, family night. Ding, 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 ding. Oh. Okay, Glenn, <laughs> tell Linda what she's won. And as oh. always, one yes. is in air quotation marks for those who can't see me because the prize is within those air quotation marks. Okay, okay I am, go ahead, Glenn. I am holding up the book, The War of Art by Stephen Pressfield. Oh, very War cool. of Art, also known as... Uh, break through the the blocks and win your inner creative battles. He's a screenwriter and a, a writer. Oh, very um, cool. He, the whole book is about overcoming resistance. It's about defining resistance, combating resistance, and then going beyond resistance to the, what he calls the higher realm. So it's really like hard nose, like just slog through it and whatever. And then yeah. the last part, it starts to get into the unseen forces that we can tap into to be you know to find who what's going on with us oh so, that's amazing and, and that's when he starts talking about <laughs> angels and muses which for a lot of people they get through that part of the book and they're like whoa what's going on here why are they talking about angels why is he talking about angels and muses mm. so this is the part it's about a page and a half it says approaching the mystery Why have I stressed professionalism so heavily in the preceding chapters? Because the most important thing about art is to work. Nothing else matters except sitting down every day and trying. Why is this so important? Because when we sit down day after day and keep grinding, something mysterious starts to happen. A process is set into motion by which inevitably and infallibly heaven comes to our aid. Unseen forces enlist in our cause 
serendipity reinforces our purpose. This is the other secret that real artists know and wannabe writers don't. When we, when we sit down each day and do our work, power concentrates around us. The muse takes note of our dedication. She approves. We have earned favor in her sight. When we sit down and work, we become like a magnetized rod that attracts iron filings. Ideas come, insights accrete. Just as resistance has its seat in hell, so creation has its home in heaven. And it is not just a witness, but an eager and active ally. <clears throat> what I call professionalism, someone else might call the artist's code or the warrior's way. It's an mm -hmm. attitude of e egolessness <clears throat> and service. The knights of the round table were chaste and self-effacing, yet they dueled dragons. We're facing dragons too, fire-breathing breathing griffins of the soul, whom we must outfight and outwit to reach the treasure of our self in potential, and to release the maiden who is God's plan and destiny for ourselves, and the answer to why we were put on this planet. Mm, wow. Very profound. Yeah, it's a great book. It's a really good book. Is it a movie too? The War of Art. <laughs> I'd like to watch the movie. <laughs> it's it's short. It's a very short book. It's great. Okay, I'll read. I can I can read. Yeah. That was amazing. Nothing yeah. matters but uh, wait. Nothing matters but sitting down every day and trying. Heaven comes to our aid. Yeah. Uh, the muse mm -hmm. takes note of our dedication, fire breathing griffins of the soul. There was so much in there that was so awesome. And I just kept thinking, Linda, courage, 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 courage to just continue doing the work. And I mean, the work as an artist, but the work mm -hmm. as, as a human being, you know, as a being that is spiritual, you know, by nature. Um, so honey bunch, that was amazing. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you for sharing that. Thank you for the gift. That's amazing. <laughs> so, okay. Linda now is the time in the program where you get to let people know if they want to get in touch with you, if they want to find out more about you, if they want to follow you on social media, mm -hmm. where would they go? What can they do? Awesome. Well, thank you very much for having me on the show. I'm really excited now to do more of this. Like you said, I've done it once and I over, I came to that border. <laughs> I crossed it and I'm here on the other side. And yeah, I'm excited to speak more um, and, you know, hopefully be on other podcasts. And um, I'm, I'm really rejuvenated and excited about my own podcast, which is called The Eloquent Entrepreneur, Conversations with Everyday Change Makers. So if you go to my website, it's lindamackey.ca. Um, it's my photography website, but there is a link there to The Eloquent Entrepreneur. You can watch um, all the episodes that I've done. I think I've done 17 in total so far. And I'm just released, I've just released, um, I think three of them now um, as a podcast. So if you go to Spotify or wherever, you'll find The Eloquent Entrepreneur there as a podcast. Um, so I have the latest one up there. Um, and then I also have, I'm releasing the original episodes in the order they were released in 2019. So, um, <laughs> okay. so yeah, and you can also apply to be a guest if you want to be a guest. If you are somebody who is making a difference either in or outside of your business, the whole idea is that we're all change makers and you don't have to be, you know, uh, Leonardo DiCaprio or... Um, you know, what is Greta Thunberg, <laughs> you know, like we all make a difference in um, no matter the scale, right? We're all collectively um, trying to leave our legacy. So um, I love to chat with you. Um, and then the Stepping to Your Essence, like I said, is starting on March 12th. Um, it's a one day retreat here in Victoria. And that um, is also on the website. You just click on the tab that says retreat and all the information is there. Um, it's really to inspire you to really, you know, step into your essence, um, connect with who you are and your confidence and you, um, you know, your self-expression so you can go out in the world and do what you want to do and um, make your mark. So that's the purpose of that. And of course, I'm always open to meeting new clients who need personal branding, photography, um, or even just you know, because you want some nice portraits of yourself, 
Um, I love just capturing your essence and that's what I love to do. And yeah, I think that's about it. So yeah, lindamackey.ca. Um, oh, and one thing I forgot to tell you is that um, I belong to a group, a Facebook group called Women, um, Women in Podcasting, hosted by Jennifer Hensel. And I've been invited to be on the panel of podcasters. <laughs> I'm like, I guess I'm a podcaster now. She's like, you're a podcaster now, right? I'm like, yeah. <laughs> um, so I'm on the panel um, at the Fraser Valley Women's um, uh, Women's Expo on March, the weekend of March 4th. Um, so I'll be there on March 4th um, for the panel. I think it starts at 4 o'clock or 5. Yeah, four, yeah, anyway, I'll be there from 4 o'clock till about 8 o'clock. And um, yeah, I'll be on the panel of like seven other women, female podcasters and answering questions and stuff like that. Wow. Oh, exciting. Lots on the <laughs> yeah. go and, and March 4th. And I'm thinking March 3rd, is that going to be a good date? But yeah, we no, are doing good. another, we are doing another, who do you think you are live event um, yes. online on Thursday, March 3rd at 7 p.m. Pacific. And so we're going to be sending out information on that in the coming week. And yeah. we've done, we've done one together before I've done four of them, I think up until now, it'll be an hour and a half long. And it is always, always, always such an yeah. engaging way to look into who we are beyond the roles, the labels, the expectations, you know, who we think ourselves, you know, to be and really dig into who we are, what is the essence, you know, as yeah. you say, you know, what is that core of, of who we, who and what we truly are, and to be able to sort of, you know, look at what our foundational life belief is, and is that foundational life belief serving us? Mm -hmm. And is it allowing us to show up as our infinite possibilities, you know, or yeah. <laughs> is, it, is, it, is keeping us playing small and keeping us in that box or in our comfort zone. So there will yeah. be some information coming up regarding that um, as well on yeah. my social media, on your social media. And yeah, um, yeah. Well, that's where I came up with my infinite possibilities. Life Foundation was at the webinar. That yep. we did together so it was life-changing so yeah i invite everyone to join sign up for it because it's really a treat yeah and it'll and be free so it's, it's you know free it's and it's fun, fun and it, it could <laughs> potentially change your life seriously <laughs> Yeah. Wow. Okay. So Linda, thank you so, so, so much. I'm so grateful that we finally had a chance to do this and thank you, Lynch, thank you so much for co-steering the ship once again, as always. And thank you to everyone who watched, who engaged, who, um, who is watching the recording. If you're watching or listening to the recording, we are so grateful for your time and presence and for everything that comes next. So today, mm -hmm. Linda Mackey has been our, our guest. Um, Glenn Sheridan has been my co-host. My name is Lassia Kahoot. Thank you for joining us. And thank you for tuning into another brand spanking new episode of Who Do You Think You Are coming up actually next week. That's it. Uh, thank you now. both so much. And okay. we'll see you soon. Yeah, thank thanks you, everybody everyone. for watching. Okay. Bye. 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 This has been an episode of Who Do You Think You Are? An exploration into how our thoughts, beliefs, and feelings create our reality. My name is Lassia Kahoot, and I have been your host. My co-host has been Glenn Sheridan. We'd like to thank the following for helping make this podcast a reality. Today's special guest, Linda Mackey. Music, Vasco Lorenko Copyright, 123rf.com. Background illustration, Sock Mysterike Copyright, 123rf.com. For more information on this podcast and our Lassia Kahoot Soul Excavator, please visit www.lassiacahoot.com. If you like what you've heard, please like, subscribe, and let us know by leaving a comment. Thanks for tuning in to Who Do You Think You Are?